broadcasting live out of a basement in Appleton, Wisconsin. You're tuned in to Fox City's Core on WCZR Code Zero Radio. We're the show that gives you an opportunity to call in and be a part of the show. Our call in line is 920-358-0795. Core. Tuck is a band out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. A couple years ago, they were on the show. They released an album called The Story of Studio City. But recently, at the beginning of March, they released a single called I Only Smoke When I Drink. I'd like to welcome back to the show, Tuck. We've got Alan, Andrew, and Mike from the band Tuck. How are you guys doing? Doing fantastic, Andrew. Pretty Pretty good. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah. Yeah. We're back. For getting the show up and running. (laughs) Well, it's hard to believe that it was... Already over two years ago since the last time you guys were here, <laughs> which since then you guys have done quite a bit. It, I mean, you've got the, the new single coming out, and the, when, when can we expect to see the full album? Later this year. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Later this year. I already forgot the date. We were just talking about this in the car, <laughs> and I completely forgot the date. But it's coming out this year, and we, we promise. I know we've been saying that for a while. Mm-hmm. So for <laughs> listeners and people that are watching that didn't see the show a couple of years ago, Tuck to UK. You guys are self-described as kind of a harder rock band. Yeah. How, how would you describe Tuck? Oh my god. That's gosh. always a hard. Right. That's always a hard well, question. It, it's it's, <laughs> a, it's kind of in two phases. You know, <clears throat> like because it started originally as Andrew's child. Yeah. Echo chamber. Solo. Echo chamber. Yeah. <laughs> and and then uh, you know the rest of us came on board and it's been a a nice merging of. Our individual influences. I would say definitely a little bit more into the kind of metal realm, harder rock yeah. realm with myself and Alan, <clears throat> uh, which is pretty evident on on the new stuff coming out and the new song, the new single. I would say is yeah. vastly different than the stuff from the first album. <laughs> yeah, in a in a in an awesome way. So I also just downloaded the Code Zero app. So excellent. Y'all should do that. <laughs> yeah. No, I feel like it was. Uh, like Stereo City was very much like nice rock, uh, wasn't trying to break any new barriers or anything. And then, uh, especially with the lyrical content and the stuff that I wanted to address lyrically in the album, like it just naturally got heavier. So like I struggle telling people that we're a heavy metal band or like a metal band, but we definitely have more of those elements in it with this one. So it's. The, the exactly. first album was definitely, you could hear your inspirations. You you wrote the first album yes. and it, yeah. all by yourself and recorded it all by yourself. Mm-hmm. You can hear your inspirations, Queen, Foxy, Shazam, and Metallica, and, and bands like that. But this upcoming album, and the, you can tell on the single already, I Only Smoke oh, yeah. When I Drink, it's got a, a more heavier sound. Oh, and yeah. it, how was the writing process on this album different, getting input from Alan and Mike versus the, the last album where it was just you? Well, this was an Allen song. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This, yeah. So that's interestingly one, enough. That's yeah. one thing is like he continued to write, but then I also started writing and added started stuff. writing mm-hmm. and contributing some ideas and songs. Um and yeah, so but like it's like the instrumentals and stuff I brought like a demo to and then showed them and then uh yeah, we kinda worked you know, we'll just we would just play on the we'd riff, play on it, and come up with ideas and try stuff, and not find you know maybe this idea didn't work, and so on and so on. Um, yeah, and I, I'd say the final form of it really came about from a lot of just us playing on it together, and so it, it was. Some of them were like pretty much done yeah. when the demo was <clears throat> brought to the group, but mm-hmm. some of them it was like we would just as at practice each week we would play it and some new things would pop up or i would i would have some groove on the drums like oh that was pretty cool like i'm gonna keep doing that or yeah. and things would kind of form around stuff like that so um yeah i feel like uh smoke when i drink specifically most of the song was pretty much composed from your first original demo i think yep. the the part that we really kind of workshop that wasn't in the original was the like bridge part after um, the second chorus, the, the ding, 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 where it goes into this like, like deep Pantera, Pantera groove, and then I feel like that's maybe the first time in the album we hear the harmonies that were from like Stereo City right. and trying to reintroduce those to to keep it a little more like cohesive. But uh, yeah, I remember that part. We kind of workshopped yeah. for a while. Mm-hmm. 
So it was not a, a quick one and done or this song. I feel like we had to we had to work on. It was it was cool. Final product turned out really awesome. But did it take a little pressure off you, Andrew, to to have Alan bring that to you? <laughs> oh it man, it'd be kind of hard to let go at the same time and, and give somebody else. You, I think you hit the right point there. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. This the the album was definitely a a growing opportunity yeah i remember when actually this wasn't the first song that alan brought in it was a different one that you're going to hear uh in like a month month or month two next single not the Sorry. next single but the single after that he brought in this riff and he's like hey guys we wrote a song and i'm sitting there like we're listening to it during rehearsal i'm like oh my god i'm like freaking out <laughs> i'm not I'm, I'm not the only one writing the song so and that it, it took me an embarrassing amount of time to like let go of like Hey, Andrew, this isn't your band anymore. This is our band. So, and these guys are just as, if not more, musically talented than you. You should allow them to express their musical abilities too. So, it took me a while to, to, to figure that out. But once I did, it was like, okay, yeah. And then it turned into a, a release of pressure like, okay, you don't have to write this all by yourself. Like, these guys are good. Let them be good. Are you also letting them? have more say as far as merchandise and, and oh i yeah. absolutely I, I don't i can't do that stuff i'm not good at it um so yeah the, this entire thing has been a a journey of letting go of control and seeing how that has actually benefited the band yeah for sure well and you and Andrew, or you and uh, Alan have been here before. Mike's never been here before, so we don't really know your backstory. How did how did you meet these guys, and how did you get involved in this project? Mm-hmm. Well, we all went to college together, uh, which I probably talked about last time here. Um, Andrew was a couple years ahead of Alan and I. Alan and I actually graduated the same class at Michigan Tech, and then we all ended up working at the same place too, and. Um, you know, we I started in 2019. Andrew was there full time year or two before that, and then you know I started in May, and then you know six seven months, eight months after that, you know March of 2020 was when all the stuff started closing down and stuff like that. So, and um, so we went through that period and was kind of not doing some work stuff and and uh, and then I think Stereo City came out in 21, mm-hmm. I think, right? And that was was. Had you moved back to Green Bay? Yes. At that point? Uh, yes, because you did the listening party at that light. Yes. Right. I think I moved back to Green Bay. It was like April of 2020. And then, yeah, the year the year after that, it came out. Yeah. So the, al- the album came out, and I listened to it, and I was I was like, dude, this stuff is awesome. Like, like we should play this stuff, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I, if I remember correctly, I think it started you and I jamming it in the shop in... 2021-ish after work. After many pokes of like, hey, yeah. I want to jam with you, mm-hmm. Andrew. And we're like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> yeah, it, so it took some time. And then, I don't know, and then sometime after that, you know, got Alan involved. and well, cause I did the same thing. Like, I messaged him. Like, so, like, are you thinking of doing this, like, as a band, oh, like yeah. a live band situation? Yeah. And then, like, I didn't even know you and him had connected yet when I... When I, uh, oh, yeah. I initially messaged him, uh-huh. so yeah. did you guys even know that Andrew was capable of writing and recording a whole album? Like all of a sudden, I didn't know he could sing like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, because me, I don't know if we mentioned this last time. Me and Andrew were in a cover band in college, so like I knew he could play and write, and I think you and you wrote some stuff in college too. Yeah. Um, it's like I heard, yeah, I knew he could. Um, but obviously it was like, this is different than the college stuff, but oh, yeah. just cause of, you know, life experiences and whatever circumstances, but yeah. So like I knew and, uh, I heard it and like chops and like, this is, this is really good. Uh, and the world should hear it. So no, yeah. Were there any, <clears throat> were, were the drums on the, the first album real drums or were those, those weren't real drums? Nope. So I mean, how when you're recreating that stuff yeah. uh-huh. for live shows, was it difficult because Andrew, you know, programmed all this stuff in there? Was it hard to play? Um, no, it, I mean, it was. Uh, I think he was very welcoming and letting me put, you know, put my own flair into some things because the way I play the songs now, I mean, there's a, it's 
it has it has a human feel to it, obviously. Um, yeah. Whereas on the album, I think it very much feels like a program. You know, <laughs> it does. It does. At some, at some points, you know. But there are a lot of, like, he's got a really unique sense of, like, coming up with drum parts for things. And, uh, like, there's there's a lot of cool parts in that album with some cool drum parts. It's like, you know, Intro to Cool Kids. Uh, there's some parts in Stereo City that have some cool drum parts. Um, so that was fun to... Maybe not necessarily have to be like, oh, I have to come up with something cool here. Like, it's already there. Just like, yeah. yeah. The foundation was kind of there. And, yeah. yeah. But then your ability to come up with the cool solo. I, I still think of um, in the middle of the solo to Rhonda, where you do this like weird ride hi hat. Like, that's so much more interesting than what I wrote. And there's like a cowbell in there and the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, yeah, just having crazy idea, have a real drummer with real experience. <laughs> brings the human feel to it like that i feel like is one of the biggest differences on this album it just feels more human and more you get a lot more of the human energy in it and it's that's huge mm-hmm. so tuck started playing out playing all the songs of stereo city you also andrew started doing these solo shows where it was yeah. Really acoustic and mm-hmm. yeah. how did that reshape the songs um i don't know if it necessarily reshaped the songs if anything doing the, the solo stuff started, I feel like, kind of as a utilitarian. Like, it's hard to to book shows with, with everybody, as much as I love to play with the full band. Uh, I was like, hey, I have the ability to do this stuff on my own, make us a little bit of money. Um, and then I think out of that also came like, oh, I also kind of have these songs that have been either in the hopper for a while or these other ideas that I'm not sure if I want to bring to Tuck and I want to shop them out first. Um, but I think with the solo stuff, it also, the hardest part was just the vulnerability. Like, I don't have a band behind me anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just me. And that was, it was scary, but I think it also increased my confidence in my writing and performing abilities. So then to bring that back to the band when we eventually start playing live again, like, that was, that's huge. I love doing that stuff. And the last show I did, was more of a, it was influenced by some of the singer songwriter shows that I worked and seen. And like, I like the songs. Like, those are great. But it was from going to some of these shows that I was at, like hearing the backstories of how these things got created. That's the part where I'm just like, I, I get off on that. Um, so I would like to, I would like to incorporate some of that stuff in our live show, but maybe not quite to that big of a degree. Like, kind of finding that middle ground like all right here's a song we wrote and hey, here's a song we wrote i'm gonna tell you the disrotation on how this how this came to be it's also been a kind of a cool different way for us to kind of spread the word a little bit um it's a little difficult finding places to get original bands to play in green bay so the solo stuff has been a good a good way for us to kind of redirect our approach and yeah. still kind of get some exposure and stuff. So, yeah. and you know, too, I think it's too early to say if that's paid off or if it's if anything, but nonetheless, it's a it's worthwhile to do and try out, right? So, yeah, and people want them to come play. So, I mean, yeah. absolutely. I already got two more shows booked in June. People people want it. It's it's kind of that guerrilla style of introducing our music and stuff. Like I feel like Tuck is this big like big semi truck that you have to get into venues and do this thing because we're live guys we want it to be big and good whereas like my solo stuff is like the the little sprinter van that can go anywhere but still keep our music alive so when you guys were doing big shows setting up these big shows for festivals and stuff were you slipping copies of tuck to the different artists not nearly as well (laughs) as i would like to be um like we yeah we have some physical merch but we've also as of recent switched to um a more just just a different this is the part where i have to stop talking because i don't know jack about it so i'm gonna back away from the mic and have somebody explain how our merch works (laughs) well backing up from the merch a little bit i think i think the discussion of the band had probably come up just in passing it's a real casual environment in that live show stuff so it's you don't it's weird to be like super upfront and like hey i'm in a band like you should go listen to my band you know (laughs) so hard when you're in the middle of a work day and guys have been on the road for weeks on end yeah you know so i think more often than not it would come up in just casual conversation like hey what do you do do you play you know stuff like that 
you know yeah i don't know if alan has anything yeah for sure i i don't i'm definitely not opening with like hey i'm in a band like here's my card yeah. or whatever but like if it comes yeah if it comes up for sure i'll get you know tell them and show them the instagram or something or but yeah it kind of has to be in a natural sense because yeah. like also i'm sure every other roadie out right now is in a band also yeah. <laughs> so like yeah but yeah so like work related there's a there's a time and place i suppose when yeah. stuff comes up mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the the talk show being the backing of a big semi-trailer in which <laughs> <laughs> your show is that you did something last year that was over the top at lighthouse uh, oh, yeah. you previewed the upcoming album mm -hmm. and it was awesome stage setup like it was LED lights, Huge. everything. It was over the top, and it, it sounded so good. Like, I know you had a lot of help setting that up and and, mm -hmm. and getting that off the ground. But oh, yeah. was it a little nerve wracking debuting those songs that early, and were they already fleshed Ooh. out a year ago? Uh, I mean, they were probably ninety percent there. Yeah, that 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 live stream. I would say. Yeah. I'm trying to think back. Like, if you were to listen to the live stream we did, and then, you know, if you were to listen to the studio versions of what we've created, there's probably not a whole lot that's different composition wise. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's like sonically different. But yeah, when, when we did that show, there was like, no, these are the songs. This is it. Yeah. And I feel like we were like, I didn't feel nervous about any of the parts. Yeah. No, it was, it was pretty pretty flushed out at that point. Yeah. So, so yeah, even, I mean, if you think it, if you thought that live stream sound good sounded good, then and you guys, the actual album's gonna oh yeah really and it's, knock your socks off. It sounded <laughs> oh, yeah. really good. I think you guys had some some uh, you're playing to some tapes on some part or some, sure. some pre recorded yep. stuff. How, yep. What's yep. your opinion on that? Obviously, you're, you're not oh. against it. It was a conscious decision. Yeah. In yeah. conversation we had. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to present it as even though it was like a year out from. This summer, uh, when, when did we? When was that? What was that? Last year, Fall, like February, it, January. It was like December, December a year away. Yeah. Um, but it was we wanted we wanted to present it as more of a uh, from from viewing it as a completed work and 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 to include those things that we can't necessarily replicate with us playing, but it's a part of the song that we wanted to showcase yeah. more. We wanted to show it as what the album could or may sound like yeah. yeah so especially while we had the tools to do it like you know we've we've played some shows after that you know and little dive bars and little clubs it's like we're not gonna lug around a whole tracks rig and have the ears and the whole thing like yeah. we'll, we'll play those raw but it's like while we have the opportunity and the gear and the people that want us to do this yeah we're gonna do it go that was like the moment of go big or go home I think you uh, you hit your head at one point, didn't you? <laughs> like the first song. <laughs> Not even before the first song started. <laughs> oh my gosh, I kind of forgot that happened. Um, <laughs> Walk us through that. Yeah, so we're we're kind of we're behind the curtain and we got the the intro track rolling. I rehearsed this part like once, in like while well, all the lights were on and the the big ugly lights, so I could see what I was doing. So I like, walked through. I was like, okay, I'm gonna come from behind the from the behind the drum set. And I go downstairs, do the whole thing. It's like, yeah, I got this. Totally got this. Until the last 10 seconds of the intro tape stop. I'm like, oh, oh, I got to do this in the dark. Okay. And I remember just go confident, go big with it. And uh, yeah, I caught my head on the, like a corner, like a sharp metal corner of a light that was hanging there. And I just remember hitting and going, oh, uh, the conscious thought in my brain was, really, you're going to start the show like this? Sweet. Here we go. You know, go. And during confrontations, I remember like playing and like, I was just hot. Right. It was like, you get going and the nerves get going. So you naturally start sweating. So I'm just like, I feel like I'm just wiping away sweat. I'm like, <laughs> okay, yeah, not a big deal. And under the red light, I couldn't tell that there was blood there. So I'm just like playing. It wasn't until I think it was bad vibrations mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. Ivy I was yelling. Yanked, or, uh, you know, yanked you over. Out, out. <laughs> I'm like, what? So and go you, back. you can hear her yelling in the recording of that oh, afterwards. Yeah. yeah. I think that was a conscious decision to keep that in. It just oh, yeah. it's another cool sure. story to share. So I'm like, what? What's going on? Like going backstage, she's like, you're bleeding. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but uh Yeah, and it was funny too is so when while that was happening, I had talked back to the crew 
So we were talking via that talk back channel, know. like, do we need to, like, fill some time here? Like, is he, what's going on? Like, <laughs> Bam. But he came back out yeah. on time. It was great. Yeah. Put a hat on. Yeah. Rock and roll, baby. And uh, we had our good buddy Brandon there shooting uh, shooting photos. That was one of my favorite shots. He's got one of me from this angle, and you just see it dripping down. I'm like, yeah. It's metal, metal, baby, yeah. It's, it's metal. So you guys put the songs out into the world pretty early. Like mm-hmm. you mentioned, that was yeah. live streamed. And yeah. You said the songs were about 90% yeah. complete at that point. Yeah. yeah. You ended the, the show with a, a couple tracks off the, the first album, yeah. and they sounded just as good as they do on the album. Nice. Um, Thank you. Uh, it, it's, when, you, when you're doing something like that, are you ever afraid that it's going to set the bar high? So when you're playing a, a small bar or pub or something, and, yeah. and people yeah. are expecting this, this full-on tuck show, and <sighs> you guys roll in with not the, the big lights. And sure. <laughs> I don't think I... Like, I think the energy's there regardless. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't think I... At least I don't. I'd love to hear your guys' opinion. I don't think I struggle much, because I think when you step into the small bars, the expectation is still here if we were to go to like a bigger venue or start doing stadiums yeah of course people would expect this but i think that's it all comes down to expectations i think yeah we've got a uh, question here from ivy oh Hi, boy ivy, ivy. <laughs> uh, Hi, question is uh what has been something that has surprised you that didn't expect to experience in this journey that you didn't expect Ooh. to experience in this journey she's got the good questions um I didn't, just speaking on myself, I didn't expect to, I didn't expect to grow as much as I did just as a person, as a musician, um, in the whole letting go of control department. Like I think about the, the, the final product that we have, what the, the music, the mix, the mastering, the artwork, the merch, all of this stuff wouldn't have happened um, if that control hadn't have been given up. And I'm so, like, I'm super proud of the final product we have. And mm-hmm. I, I think I can speak for us when I say that. Um, and I didn't expect it to be as good as it currently is. Um, so to think on that, it's just like, yeah, this is, this is a cool thing. Like, giving up control is good. And it produced something so much better than anything I could have made by myself. So... I got nothing to follow up with that. I think mean, it perfectly summarizes everything the album's about. So yeah. yeah, and maybe the other part too is like as I'm writing these lyrics, you know, the album is going to be called um, "Confrontations." Every single song deals with something that I've had to personally work through. Um, big picture, big picture scope ideas, justice, who you are as a person, what real growth feels like. Um, yeah, and I didn't expect any of it to turn out as good and to be as proud of a of a final product that I think is going to translate five, ten years from now. Like, I think of Stereo City, and it's very, like, here's where I was right now, and five, ten years from now, it's still going to be good. Like, it's still a good album, but I, that's not the person I currently am, whereas I feel like this album is going to translate further into the, into the future. It's still going to be relevant. Is there anything, I know Choppy said you didn't have anything, but at Alan or Chop, if you can think of anything, I mean, is there anything that surprised you? Because you jumped on to, to Andrew's project mm. and there's got to be something that was different or surprised you along your journey being uh, in the band. I, it, on it, it, the thing that I guess comes to my mind is actually the, uh, what we call our management team, our support. Oh, yeah. Uh, crew, I guess, that is kind of helping us along the way. Deals a with bunch our of craziness. Yeah, that helps us support um, what we do. That's you know the non glamorous side of being in a band. Help uh, just overall having a team essentially behind us. Uh, so what is it? The, it takes a village to raise a child, or oh, yeah. whatever the saying is. So like, I think that's something that's super important, and yeah. maybe not a lot of other bands like have yet. Yeah, you yeah. know, we've made a conscious decision to. Uh, step up the social media space and utilize that avenue of of getting the music out there and um we we decided we needed help doing that <laughs> it, was, yeah. it wasn't something that we 
that we would be able to do yeah. on top of all the rest of it. Right. It's and one of those, uh, like, we could have done it yeah. ourselves, oh, yeah. and would it have been as good if we did? Probably not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys have embraced the the digital world. It, lots yeah. of posts. If, if people aren't following you guys, you guys are creating content and, and releasing yeah. stuff. And, and yep. even last year when you did the the uh, pre pre album mm-hmm. live stream show, I mean, pre-pre. you guys have any streamed uh, practices and different things as well. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, as far as a decision to embrace the digital avenue, you've got yeah, yeah, yeah. no romantic views towards. Well, it's got to come out on vinyl and CD and that's oh, yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's how I used to operate. That, yeah, that's just the way it kind of has to be uh, in 2024. Mm. You kind of have to have a online presence of some sort. Yeah. Um, well, anyone that watches the, your uh, the content you've been putting up knows you guys are Metallica fans because there's lots of Metallica pictures in the background. You can see Alan wearing <laughs> yeah. a Metallica Ooh. shirt. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, don't I didn't one. think of it. I don't have one on underneath. Oh. Don't worry. Wait, do you have a Metallica tattoo under the T-shirt? No, no, I, no, do. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Uh, well, I do. Well, we're just carrying the team here. What the? I know. <laughs> so I know you guys all went to a Metallica show together too, didn't you? Or most oh, yeah. we've, gone to this, we've gone to multiple. three together. Three, yeah. yeah, I guess it's three now. So were you guys all always into Metallica, or was yeah. that yeah. something that started when the band? No. That was yeah, that's yeah. something that's I guess one thing that we all three. That helps us go, you know, be tight together. Is the all uh, same fan liking, boys. fanboys, fanboys, fangirling. Yes, that, with that is the correct word for it, yeah. fanboy. And I can definitely hear it in Andrew's vocals. You've got some uh, James Hetfield. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, ah. yeah. Are you are you careful not to like over go into that direction? I, I have to, and I yeah. feel like smoke when I drink was one of the hardest ones to not. Just go full on load, reload with it. <laughs> uh-huh. um, that one and, and another one that we're not releasing as a single. Uh, yeah, it was. It's it's hard. It's it's hard not to go full into it, but it's also easy in the sense that I know I can't. I just don't have that whatever the the, the head field grit that I dream and crave. But yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> we're if we were left unattended, unsupervised, we would become a Metallica cover band. But uh, we are attended and supervised yeah. very closely on that. Conscious. And we thank them for that. Well, so Metallica is an influence. And there's also a band, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, Gorgira. Is that Gorgira. Gorgira. Yeah. And I noticed that uh, you were wearing a shirt chop during the, the live stream, I think, a Gorgira shirt. Uh-huh. And uh, there was something else recently where there it might have been Alan or somebody had uh-huh. a shirt on uh, as well. So, I mean, how, how, how did that band come to influence all you guys? I mean, that's like a, it's a foreign metal band, isn't They're it? French. They're yeah, French. They're from France. Um, Speak English. Sing in English with a Japanese name. Yeah. So. It's a little different. <laughs> but, like, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've liked them for a while now. He's, like got, a tat- long, he's got tattoos that's, on yeah, that's, that's, mm. that's an album cover tattoo. Um, so yeah, I, they're one of my favorite bands under Metallica. Um, and one of them, their favorite band was Metallica. Yeah, right. And their in their favorite band is is and was Metallica. Um, so yeah, that they're just one of my favorites. I am. I don't know how. I think between you and you and me, we turned him on. Yeah, we, yeah. Oh, yeah. We kind of forced it into him a little bit, but uh, <laughs> it was good. It was a good force because I feel like you know I at the time I still I still think Metallica is like heavy, and they are. But yeah. I think the Gojira, especially the way they their sound. Their sonic quality is just so much more modern, mm-hmm. but it still has the old school heavy to it, and that's that's what turned me on to it. And I think that was a big reason why we did um, Stranded. Stranded during the live shows. Like that we song did. just did. slaps. <laughs> and I like I, I debated for a while. I was like, do we do a cover of it and put that in the album? I was like, no, nah, I kind of kind of still want it to be all original. But yeah, like their stuff seems to blend in really well with what we're trying to do. Like yeah, big big influence there so on the more modern side of things so stranded won't be on the new album it will not so that put it down to eight songs that you guys did uh-huh. Uh-huh. is the new album going to be eight songs yeah. yes uh-huh. Te- yeah. yeah yep no last minute additions to no, <laughs> no <yet>. we, <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that <laughs> Well, let's hear about like somebody. Can you tell us anything about the upcoming album? You expect it to come out this year. We mm-hmm. heard one of the tracks. Mm-hmm. 
Um, the the feel of it going off the live stream, everything is a little heavier. You don't get all the the Queen and uh, Foxy Shazam influences from the first album as yep. much. Yep. Um, you guys. Have you looked at the album cover yet or anything? Are we looking it's, that far ahead yet? Oh, yeah. It's, the album cover has been done for a while. I actually feel like the album cover got done. It's kind of first, I think. First. And then uh, we actually outsourced our single artwork uh, to somebody that Chop found. Um, so she's been kind of helping us work through that. Um, mm-hmm. So Stereo City was a kind of a cartoonish cover. What's this one? This one is a lot more. It's, it's more real. It's still uh, computer generated. It's much less of an animation than it is an actual image. Yeah. Um, Photoshop. Yeah. I'm going to put you on a little pause there, Andrew, but we've got a call. What's your question for Tuck? Hi, Tuck. Hey, Andy. This is Jerry. How are you doing? Hey, Jerry. Good to hear you. Thanks for calling. Hey, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. A call. So I have a, I, I have a question on touring. Are you planning on touring with this new record? <laughs> Secondly... Other than Metallica, who would be a national act you would like to support or tour with? And thirdly, you. if you were to tour with a local band, who would you tour with? Uh, oh, wow. Jerry's bringing it. I, well, <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't, we don't have any plans uh, to tour, but like, if someone wants to, like, sure. <laughs> Someone hands uh-huh. us a chunk of money. <laughs> not saying I'm not saying no to it. Yeah, yeah. I think our, I think our current plans with the new music is to is to uh, you know like we talked about with our social media upage and getting stuff out there is this is really good content and 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 things for us to use to get the band name out there and to to get heard by more people. You know, if it, this the single's been out for what. Two weeks? Three, three, three weeks, weeks? Yeah, three two weeks or, three or so. Weeks. And our Spotify monthly listeners have gone from 74 to 941 in three that weeks. Was of yesterday, yeah. Um, so, you know, that tells me that all the stuff we're doing is 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 at least an upward trend in that regard. So that's mm-hmm. working. So the more people hear it is the first step for us. Yeah. Um, you know, anything after that, I think we'll, we'll, we'll have to figure out. And obviously, you know, mm-hmm. Alan and I have some pretty crazy work schedules. But mm-hmm. yeah, uh, when it comes to a passion project like this, we'd always find a way to, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think touring right now, touring seems like kind of putting the, the cart before the horse a little bit. It's like we, have, we feel like we're trying to build our audience and, and using online to do that. Um, we haven't really talked about it. The idea of touring seems to me like... Way, yeah. way over there, upstairs. Yeah. Um, as far as the the local band you'd like to play with ooh. and the national band, I, th- I think that's a, a good question. Yeah. I, we've like asked ourselves this question. Um, like, obviously, there's Metallica, sure. That's like a given, I guess. But cool. like, then there's also like touring with bands you like, but and then there's also like touring with someone that's like would work musically. Mm-hmm. Um, because I would say like, oh yeah, Gorgira, but like, uh, would that be a, you know, a would that fit. be a good fit like in the bill or whatever? But selfishly, it, I would love to tour with Hardy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Hardy, Hardy his you know? new like country metal stuff. I love it. He, he's been a, a big influence, especially on my solo stuff. Um, I for as far as like local bands go, we were just talking uh, before the show started about uh, Trash Pandas and following them. Super, super close. It was cool to see they got metal album of the year. Like, I think there's something because I, I feel like they're a little more like the like they're metal and the more hardcore punk kind of stuff. Um, and I think that would that would translate really well. I also think of a band that uh, I, was, I feel like I've seen when we were up in college. Uh, my buddy's band, Highlight Reel, um, mm-hmm. more in the like Cohe and Cambria, Jimmy Eat World influence, um, but still just as heavy. Um, like that, I think that'd be cool to do yeah. a to do a little local tour with them. Yeah, it's, I think the, another one that I've found, or I think I might have worked their show at Epic. Uh, I think Sweet Talk, and I think yeah. you had them on yeah. here, right? Yeah. Did yeah, I see right there. you had them uh, um, on here? So Love Sweet Talk, yeah, uh, that could be a cool fit. Where um, the, the the cassette? Oh yeah, yeah. So, so they, yeah, I mean if you mentioned working at epic you, you probably do see a lot of local bands yeah. up there yeah uh yeah i guess i yeah i'm trying to think me personally i've like stopped i don't want to, i'm not stopped but i've been i've been sent other places than epic it is a it um, is a good 
But yeah, that is a good. It's a weird kind of intersection, right? Yeah, we're there working, and we can kind of hang out with some of these local bands that are opening and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. we did it ourselves once. So. Yeah. We did. <laughs> yeah, we did. With, with you guys doing sound, is it kind of hard for you to even find the time? Number one, and number two, even want to go see a, a live show after you know working one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it's to, it's kind yeah. of like leaving work to go back to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah a little bit. Yeah. A little, it is a little bit. Um, I also, I also see things come up like after the fact too. I guess I'm maybe bad about seeing things in advance to like plan <laughs> to see something. But it's also been just pretty like heads down getting the album done. Yeah, true. So, and yeah, working, yeah. working the other other job. Do you guys have an opinion on uh, the Tarleton and um, the tracks up in up in Green Bay? Yeah, yes. I mean we. That's another thing we were like kind of just talking about. Um, yeah, so I found there, I think through Sweet Talk, that they were playing there, and then I kind of found that that venue is right there where we live. So, um, yeah, I've, I mean, we've talked about reaching out to them because mm-hmm. it looks like a cool place and it like just right up our alley, I feel like. So, yeah. so I think that's been kind of, a, kind of a big <laughs> challenge is finding, finding venues that because i feel like we're in this weird like we're not rock but we're not metal we're here and there's there are just certain venues that um host different kinds of events so to find the place like the tarleton like at the track is like this seems like the right place to go um i've been thinking we're just um i was just talking this morning with my with my wife about reaching out to um to somebody that we know at the um tom good buddy tom at um Time bomb the, Tom. Time bomb Tom at the Green Bay UFO Museums. Like I see him posting stuff all the time. It's like this is where the original rock scene in Green Bay seems to start. So let's let's go there. Did you uh, pay attention to the Bammies at all? A yeah. Days ago was the Bammies yeah. up there at the Tarleton? Oh yeah. Hopefully was, the the first of <clears throat> an annual tradition. Yeah. It was cool to see that get sold out. Like to see the, I feel like I get discouraged a lot by Green Bay. It seems like cover bands and country bands seem to just dominate. So it's like, what what are the rest of us supposed to do? But to see the original scene um, get represented in Green Bay was like kind of lifts you up a little bit. Um, I was yeah, I was following all following on social media pretty much all day yesterday, just trying to keep up with it. Um, it was cool to see some of the bands get recognized. It was also really cool um, to see a good friend of ours get recognized, Rick Moore. Um, he just recently passed away, but he was a huge part of the punk scene. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, wow. yeah. A lot of our, a lot of our friends know that. Obviously, he was part of the union. He was a big, big rigger guy. Uh, but yeah, back in the day, and I shouldn't say back in the day. Like he, that was kind of his life was the the punk scene. <laughs> We're like, wow. Hell yeah! Hell yeah, that. Rick. <laughs> so you've got a. A country album on, or a country album, a country song on the upcoming album called "The Duel," which, yeah. which she performed. Kind of, sort of. You mentioned uh, that that guy that does the metal country. I can't think. Hardy. I, Hardy. 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 My, my cousin's husband loves loves Hardy. Oh yeah. I mean, it's is that a direction that you're going to explore more, or is that just a one-off track? I don't know. Um, I, I feel like we jokes we joke about two things: being a Metallica cover band. Uh, and also, like, really, you know what? If if Green Bay is all about country and cover bands, let's write a country yeah, album. Yeah. Damn it! Like, <laughs> give them what they want. <laughs> give them what they want. See yeah. what, see what see what works. I mean, yeah. I, that song did the duel. That kind of came before the Hardy thing, right? Yeah. Oh, it's for yeah. you, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, it, it came from this stupid little riff that I had in my head one day at work. Uh, it was based off of a song we used to sing in Boy Scouts. And uh, it just turned into like in my brain, it just turned into this spaghetti western was kind of the the phrase that was in my head, um, like this old old school Clint Eastwood. If Clint Eastwood went to music, this is what it would sound like. Yeah. Uh, but then to introduce that the heavier part of the song, that was a lot more the Metallica, even like a bit of like some emo rock um, spirit in it, um, a lot of the MCR influence. Yeah, because like that's when I. Because he plays a guitar solo, so I, I'm doing the rhythm. Like, when he's playing the rhythm, I'm thinking, like, Green Day, you know, big old power chords and that bounce to it. Like, that's yeah. well, that's what I'm thinking when I'm playing that. Um, so, yeah, like, there's it kind of, it's a weird spectrum of 
genres in yeah. one song. So it's got the like orchestral instru- uh, the orchestral intro with the country shuffle to begin, and then it goes into this full on like yeah. octave Cliff Heavy Burton-y guitars, double big kick. Double, double kick kicks. stuff, and then it ends with just the acoustic, and then like that's that's the way we plan on ending the album, and then you're sitting there going. <laughs> But how the hell are you going to follow that up for album number three? It's like, oh, we have ideas. <laughs> when, you're, when you're writing set lists for shows and then performing in front of people, are you, are you trying to read the, the faces of, of the people when you go into these different genres? Because, I mean, the, if you're putting the first album next to the second album, it, yeah. it is all over the place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it kind of has a, a wide spectrum of what we can do. Um, and then we incorporate some of the covers we do, and that just expands it even more. Um so, it's hard to not read the people, um, but there's also an element of I can't care too much about that, or else I'm, if I'm constantly trying to read the room and like change the set list from there, it's like I don't know how we'd ever get through a show. Yeah. Uh, but there are definitely like some venues I've walked into before a show, and I'm trying to think like, okay, what song, you know, what what would actually hit here? Like, is it more of a punk vibe? Is it more of a metal thing? Is it more of a they're looking for some nice rock. Like, am I going to incorporate more Stereo City, or am I going to incorporate more of the new album? Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely a, a conscious thought. Is there one moment that is the most memorable in the history of the band right now? Oh. So play, many play, playing for over a thousand people say, at Epic. That was pretty hard cool. to beat Epic. Uh, opening yeah. at Epic for Bad Flower. Yeah. How did how did that opportunity come about? And can you? Kind of walk me through that that show. Well, you know, at the time, all three of us worked at Lighthouse and <laughs> have a good relationship with the management there and the and the guy that books the books the shows and stuff. And mm. and I, I, did Ivy work there too at that point still or no? Um, I don't. She was good friends with Ryan anyways, yeah, and, and I don't think she's so. really good at continuously poking people and trying to get us into places. So oh, yeah. um, she's just, that's her that's her talent. And she's good at it. Um, so she talked to him about it, and and he was nice enough to, to have us on, mm-hmm. and it, it fit really well with with Bad Flower, and yeah, that was one of those I felt like it was when I first saw the opportunities. Like I, I I had no idea who Bad Flower was. I had this impression that they were a little on the heavier side, so like that was good. And I started listening to him, going like it's different enough, but similar enough. This makes sense. Um, yeah, and I remember that show. Just I was nervous as hell. <laughs> uh, I think it was the day before. I didn't have a voice. I got super sick uh, the week before. And I'm sitting in the green room like 20 minutes before we go on. And I'm just like doing the whole water, salt, gargle thing. And I had a moment in the bathroom. I was like, dear God, if I'm supposed to completely flop this and I'm supposed to learn a lesson out of this, let it be. Let it happen. But if I'm supposed to, if we're supposed to go up on stage and just rock this place, also let that happen and it ended up obviously being the latter i felt like uh so yeah the show at epic was definitely a a big highlight yeah, yeah it was sure i think that's the most people any of us have played in front of i, yeah. would, I would think i think so yeah. it was a yeah. case for me um yeah it was pretty crazy going up there and and people were like cheering it's like hey, do you guys yeah, even know they, who we are like yeah. nobody knows who we they, are yeah <laughs> they were they got into it but at the end um uh, and that's what every all of our plus ones anyone was in the audience will tell you like everyone was yeah, everyone was like enjoying it. So yeah, we made. I forget how much we made just the the merch sales. Like yeah. that was the biggest yeah. amount I'd ever seen. Like, holy, yeah. we did that. It's like, yeah. damn, yeah. cool. Yeah. Did, did you guys walk around after the show and get stopped by people? Yeah, we hung a couple out, times. We so hung nice. out at the merch table afterwards. Um, and yeah, people came up and talked to us, took some pictures. Yeah, they wanted to yeah. like take pictures and get yeah. stuff. Yeah. It, was, yeah, it was bizarre. Like one of those, like, <laughs> oh, I actually feel like a real rock yeah, star like moment. Bizarre, real yeah. band yeah. stuff. So then that uh, is one side of the spectrum. What's the worst part about playing in a band? <laughs> the worst part or the worst experience that we've... Let's do, uh, let's do worst experience. Okay. That, that seems a little harder than is, is the worst this, part. This band? <laughs> Probably this band, hey? I mean, I don't know if we've had really... Okay, well, let's, let's make it more general. Yeah. What's, what's yeah. The, the hardest part about being in a band? <laughs> um... Just sticking with it, I guess, and like understanding that every show is not going to be epic, 
Yeah. Like, we're going to have to play to two people in a little bar. Oh, yeah. Which we've done. Which we've done, and we'll continue to do, but we just got to keep stick with the keep at it yeah yeah uh, it'll get there as far as, far as just booking shows booking, like yeah it, it sucks when we're trying to send emails and nobody responds um you have to send multiple like just shopping yourself is hard it was, it's tough for me like i don't like showing off a whole lot um yeah that's it's it's the grind it's like hey you want to play you want to play in front of people you want to promote your stuff this is the hard thing that you got to do mm-hmm is there anything you learned from promoting the first album that will make it different for promoting the, the next album? Actually promoting it? Uh, <laughs> I remember when I released Stereo, I think I just did the bare minimum. A couple of Facebook posts beforehand. Um, I think it was just on my personal site at that point. I didn't think uh, Tuck Music on Facebook or Instagram. I don't think any of that existed. Um, so yeah, just how, how did I do it different? We, we actually promoted yeah, this one. For, for <laughs> like, actually. You, you took some classes to mm-hmm. figure out how to how that world works, because I was still operating and like, how to promote your music like it's 1994. And it turns out that does not work in 2024. So it, just incorporating him and what he's learned through what uh, through his different courses and yeah, having I mean, to just, swallow that, how different it is. Just a shift in how people consume music yeah. today and, and, mm-hmm. and trying to r- align our approach with that and to utilize those tools yeah. to, to get it out there to people and and uh yeah i mean it turns out you know just dropping a whole album it doesn't end up doing a whole lot for you right today you know it's uh, it's definitely a single based culture and it works out it works better for us because it's, you know this isn't our full-time thing so it, it allows us to take some more time to use each single as a as a kind of its own thing to promote the band and and we can do it in different ways that suit each song a little bit better you know mm-hmm. so that's kind of that's what we're trying to do this time around so yeah well let's talk about i only smoke when i drink yeah sure. you, did, yeah. you did a nice explanation on on your page but i know you mentioned it started with a, a riff by alan mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. walk me through why the song is about what it's about and what you were channeling <sighs> and what made you decide to release that as the first single Yeah, lyrically, it was uh, obviously just talking to Alan. Like, when I heard the song, and this was, it wasn't the first song I started writing lyrics for. I think it was actually a different one you brought in. Mm-hmm. Um, so by the time it got to me, it was like, all right, it kind of felt like it was in that, what the what the hell do I write about? Like, I feel like I've, I've dumped what I currently have in my brain, so now it's empty, and I'm looking for an idea. And sometimes it is just like a, what kind of a vibe? Are you going for a man who's dark and moody and deep and stuff? I was like, okay, what, what do I do with that? Um, and I think I was just thinking about this on my on my drive over. Like it came out of this idea. Like I was trying to think of like like a catchy phrase that you could kind of build off of. And I remember growing up, for whatever reason, just like a, a common thing I heard was yeah you know, the phrase "I always smoke when I drink." How many times have you heard that before? It's kind of this, and I, I wanted to dissect that. Like, what does that actually like mean? Like, you only do this bad thing when you're doing this other bad thing. So it's like, it's kind of started this whole, like, how do people get into the downward spiral of their bad habits? You know, which then open up this can of worms of like, who are you as a person? Like, when you're in these kinds of environments, when you're hanging out with these kinds of people. And that, I feel like, was the big... Um, the big you know ball to push to get it downhill to write the lyrics about so it's, just, it's all about confronting yourself like who am i do i like who i am and if i don't is it because of who i am or is it because of this environment i hang out with or the people i do like having the that conscious thought it's just i feel like it's something that people people struggle with every day especially when it comes to in terms of growing growing as a person mm-hmm people want to find out more about tuck where can they go tuckbandofficial.com that's uh, the place that's our tag for all our socials as well yeah. tuck band official yep facebook instagram tiktok i think you guys have a link tree on mm-hmm. Illinois, which is a uh, another new not new but something everybody's utilizing yeah, yeah. This thing. pretty handy <laughs> future <Yeah. laughs> and what's what's next for you guys as far as shows is there right anything scheduled? now we don't we don't have any shows currently booked we're trying to we're in that process of sending out emails and trying
trying to get booked. Um, I have a couple of solo shows starting in June. Um, but all that stuff, uh, the first place to look is Facebook, Instagram. That's where we're going to keep all of our show announcements on. Mm-hmm. So look out for them. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the, the Mile Music poster oh, yeah. over there. Like we, we submitted ourselves for this for this summer. Waiting to hopefully hear back from them. That mm-hmm. would be a super cool opportunity to kind of branch into the, the Appleton area, the mm-hmm. Fox Cities. So it's always a, like, I love the festival. It's a cool opportunity. Met a lot of really cool people through that. All right. And what was the, the title of the upcoming album? Confrontations. Confrontations. And so the, the one of the tracks you played was Confrontations and uh, C... Major minor C sharp C sharp C sharp C-sharp, C-sharp, C-sharp minor C sharp <laughs> super minor. long title it has been short yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right well that's good to know thank you for letting us know about that and, and we really look forward to hearing what the uh, the finished album sounds like and yeah, yeah. Um, until it comes out we can expect a couple more singles to be released yep. regularly sure mm-hmm. can should we, uh, it's, should we give the date for the album do you think what what is the date for the album would you want me to yeah yeah sure. why not uh, Friday June fourteenth. Is there the it album, is. is the album. June fourteenth, yep. right when summer is like yep. right yeah. in the beginning. There, yep. um, we wanted to yep. release it before the summer, give people time to to digest it before we start playing again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we look forward to that. At, at Code Zero, we we love talk and really liked what we heard last year at, at the uh, the live stream show. So yeah. we, yeah. yeah, and thanks for coming to that. Yeah, that yeah, that was thanks awesome to see me. you both there. Mm-hmm. Hi, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys. Thank uh, you. I appreciate it, Alan, Andrew. And uh, chop, you prefer chop? Uh, that's what that's most people call. tend to, to memorize. Remember, that's my call. Cool with it. My call. My call. My call. Any yeah, uh, any last words, you guys? Um, are you ready to be confronted? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>